So it looks like the CDC are finally backing down with a letter issued about amendments to the conditional sailing order. And that could mean that we are coming back to the US with sailing out of the US much sooner than we thought. <laughs> Hi there guys and welcome back to Same Ship Different Day. As always, my views and opinions don't reflect those of my employer. Coming to you this week with a big update on cruising. Very exciting times for those of you over in the United States that are looking forward to getting back to cruising out of your local ports. Big announcement this week, a letter was essentially leaked. It was a US, uh, sent over to USA Today from the Chief Maritime Authority at CDC saying that they're going to be making amendments to the conditional sailing order that's been in force since about October, November last year. So originally the sailing order was given out, I think, end of October last year. And at that point, cruise companies sent ships straight back to the US in order to comply with this five, six month phased plan in order to reintroduce cruising into the United States. Before that point, it was a no sail order. And so therefore there was no sense for cruise ships to be staying in the States at that time. Although many companies were keeping ships close by, when this conditional sailing order came out, even though it was a five, six month conditional sailing order plan of many different phases, cruise companies immediately sent quite a lot of ships over to the States in order to comply, because part of it was to have the crew rotations always through uh, American ports and to have testing of the crew, 28 days quarantine, all this kind of thing that was be phase by phase in order to reduce, introduce cruising again around about May this year. So we would be coming up to that original end date, that end goal date that we had from the original CSO. This was all going quite smoothly for the cruise companies, although it was a very tough step-by-step uh, -step process expected by the CDC. By uh, late December, early January, cruise ships were looking for that next approval for the next phase so they could continue on with the CSO and make sure they were complying as required. However, as you all know, general election in January a change in administration and therefore a change in the setup in the CDC meant that things slowed down quite a lot and cruise companies were starting to get a bit worried that this wasn't going to happen. Sailings were then delayed again and we were waiting for more news from the CDC. About four weeks ago, just over a month, an announcement was made by the CDC or at least an expectation of announcement came in that everybody was getting very excited for. Then finally when the announcement came, there was essentially no change to the CSO. If anything, they made it harder for cruise ships companies to start up again, which everybody thought was going to massively delay the startup in the US, possibly even to the end of the year into next year, and was a very disappointing time for those of us working for cruise companies, as well as those of you wanting to sail. And at this stage, cruise companies and even the state of Florida had had enough, and they, the state of Florida decided they were gonna take the CDC to court saying that this is ridiculous. You can imagine the hit to the economy in Florida. When you picture that about seven or eight cruise ships coming to a port in uh, Fort Lauderdale or Miami, possibly on the same day for a big turnaround day. So you're talking probably 30,000 passengers per port. That's incoming, airplanes, hotels, restaurants, all this extra business to the local economy. Then you have the outgoing, same again. You can imagine what an effect the loss of the cruise ship industry has had on these places. And therefore it's completely understandable that at that point, Florida said, we've had enough. I'm taking you to court, let's settle this because you're being completely, in my opinion, unreasonable. Not only that, but plenty of the cruise ship companies also said a very similar thing. Carnival Cruise Lines were saying they were going to withdraw all their cruise ships from Miami, which is their home port. And they said they were going to cruise somewhere else because this is just getting ridiculous now. With the CDC coming up with these more and more requirements that just make it near impossible to cruise in the US. And so not only you've caught Carnival Cruise Lines, obviously Royal Caribbean and a few others as well put out their statements saying that this is just ludicrous. We need to have a better conversation, a better discussion, a more reasonable outcome in order to get sailing in the US again. Now, finally, at the end of last week, this letter's come out and everybody is getting very excited. I know cruise, co cruise companies are very busy trying to make the schedules ready because it looks like we could be sailing by mid-July, maybe to late July out of US ports, which is very, very exciting. Let's look then at a few of the requirements that have come in that may allow this to happen. Firstly, and probably the biggest one, is a requirement for vaccinations on board cruise ships, which means that if you have a vaccinated crew and passengers, you do not require this non-revenue test cruising that was previously expected 
by the companies. Now regarding these vaccinations, you're looking at 95% of passengers expected to be vaccinated and 98% of crew members. The reason that this isn't 100% I think is because you need to allow for obviously children, people under the age of 16. If I'm not mistaken, over the age of 16 now anybody can be vaccinated in the States. So you've got children that are obviously going to be coming on a ship as well with their parents and families. Also an allowance for anybody that has a medical condition and therefore cannot receive the vaccine at all. 98% is for the crew members, although I think you'll be looking at more of 100% for most companies. I don't see why anybody wouldn't be vaccinated. We all have to go through uh, ENG1 and various other medicals to be able to be on the ship anyway. And we all pretty much have uh, flu jabs every contract in order to, or at least once per year, depending on where, if you return to the same ship in the same area, to ensure that we can sail safely. So it would be strange for a crew member not to receive the vaccine. To make this happen, obviously it's not easy at the moment, governments are holding most of the vaccines and so what's going to be happening I think is a compliance between the cruise companies and the ports of call that would therefore see an increase in their economy. They're going to be able to issue these vaccines to the crew members because most crew members may not be able to receive the vaccine in their home country or obviously the companies can't purchase them privately at the moment yet. Once that's an option I think we'll see that happening more and more. So I'm sorry to say for anybody that was not wanting to get the vaccine but was wanting to return to cruising, it's looking extremely unlikely out of the US at the moment. Uh, and again, around the world, really, if you look at the UK, it's going to be fully vaccinated uh, cruising as well. So that just seemed the only way to cruise if you want to be out there. They have uh, made an allowance and a change in the uh, conditional sailing order, the CSO uh, from the CDC. They said if you do want to cruise without vaccinations, Obviously the test cruisings are still required. It used to be that you had to give 60 days notice for one of these test cruises. Now CDC is saying it's only going to be five days required to give notice for one of these test cruises for a non-revenue cruise, as I was saying before, to allow cruise companies to test their procedures. But this is not required if you, need a if you get the vaccinations, but it is required if you want to try a cruise without a vaccination. Obviously then you will have a time and delay uh, for getting the results back and working out what's happening and if it's working and therefore it's highly unlikely that any cruise company is going to follow this avenue for quite a while yet but you never know but I would expect lots of announcements coming in the next few weeks for cruising out of uh, Miami, LA those kind of ports around the US the very popular cruise ports uh, to expect to be cruising with many companies from mid to late July maybe into August, they're gonna be starting to push these cruises out now. So if you haven't got one booked, you can go and start looking because I'm sure in the next few days, the scheduling and everything's gonna be popping up on the, uh, on the social media and on the internet as cruise companies start to announce these cruises with these new restrictions that have been declared. Another new bit of legislation guidance from the CDC is the quarantining, which is a very important part because you imagine that even with vaccinations, what vaccinations do essentially is to reduce the amount of serious illness and hospitalizations by pretty much 100% from the, from the virus, but it doesn't stop you catching the virus. It can still be caught and spread, etc. So a bit of guidance is for any uh, passengers that do possibly somehow get the virus from someone else on board or during the joining process possibly uh, as i imagine there's still going to be plenty of testing prior to joining again not confirmed by any companies but i wouldn't see them removing the testing because it's still important to know that you don't have the virus on board if somehow the virus managed to get onto the ship or to anybody with close contact for such a situation then the cdc have now announced special quarantine processes and more relaxed requirements that allow it to be more pra far more practical and doable for both the companies and the passengers on board these vessels. So if you're from the local areas, for example, you live in Miami, Florida, and you come back in uh, on a ship and there's, there's an announcement of a close contact or whatever, you can go and then do your quarantine necessary back in your own home uh, with local travel. For those people who are from further afield within, within the States or maybe even uh, internationally, uh, they can also quarantine in a specified hotel in the local area, of which, of course, there are plenty in uh, Florida for this for many people coming in for cruising. And these hotels are widely available and widely empty at the moment anyway. So that's very, very useful indeed, because it means that it's not going to stop the movement of the ship. So it means that it's a practical from business and health wise. Uh, obviously, these people will already be vaccinated and probably not get very ill. But if you are testing positive, or had a close contact, for example, 
then to have that option to then go and quarantine locally, get it done within one to two weeks, and then be able to go home um, means an excellent result for the cruise industry because it is just going to make that whole process that much easier. Obviously, there are still some places in the US that are going to feel the strain of the loss of the cruise industry, namely Alaska. Uh, the governor of Alaska was obviously fighting with the CDC pretty much through this entire process. They were trying to get rid of the Jones Act um, because now that Canada have announced no cruise vessels can go into the ports of Canada until uh, with the end of February, so March 2022. Uh, it does mean then that the Alaska season is essentially cancelled for another year. I think the calculation was made that it's going to cost around $3 billion per year to the Alaskan economy. I don't know if any of you have been to Alaska. If you have, let me know in the comments. But I love cruising over there, or up there, shall I say. And to be there and to think of it without the cruise industry and without the passengers and the, the for the local economy, it must be suffering quite greatly. I mean, I'm looking forward to getting back there eventually and seeing how maybe the wildlife has progressed while there's basically no people there. It'll be interesting to see. I bet if you go up there now, you're gonna see a lot more bears, whales, everything, because you just don't have that human interaction at the moment with so few people obviously living around in Alaska long term. And I know a lot of people have been feeling the strain of not being able to go back to their jobs there, as well as obviously the government and local economy feeling the strain of not having that industry there for them. $3 billion per season is quite a lot of money. And now that's the second year already that it's canceled. So we're looking forward to 2022 now before Alaska can really start up again. Another new uh, requirement mentioned by the CDC in this letter is that for ships going to several different ports on a cruise, they can make the same agreements essentially with those different ports and the boarding in the ports and the original ports for turnaround will be much smoother and much faster before they were looking at something like a 12 hour delay between guests joining in the same areas uh, in the same ports. So it was quite it was quite a strange requirement because you're almost looking at say some passengers joining then 12 hours later some more passengers can join and would turn this turnaround into a much longer process. It was never really a practical or possible process in order to allow cruising again. Now that seems to have more or less been removed and the agreements with the ports are gonna be more fluid. More ports can come under the same agreement with multiple ships rather than just one ship at a time in a port, for example. So this is again, another great step forward. It's just gonna be allow cruising to happen. Obviously with lots of precautions, lots of um, health and hygiene requirements and don't worry on ships. We're already a step above really what you would see on land anyway. And now it's just gonna be that one step further especially with companies bringing in more and more rules around the world and especially in cruising out of the US. But now with these new announcements from the CDC is such a important and instrumental progression into the return of cruising that it's very exciting indeed. And for anybody out of the US that is looking forward to get back in cruising out of a local port, especially, it's just gonna make it happen much sooner than we even anticipated because it has been such a struggle beforehand. The only other cruising prior to this would have been a practical for somebody from the US to fly out to maybe the Caribbean or even now the UK as we start to see cruising out of there. There's great things going on in the US with the vaccine at the moment. Lots and lots of people being vaccinated at an extremely high rate, which is extremely impressive as well. So this maybe you see as part of a reward, if you like, of getting back to some sort of normality to with regards to holiday destinations and cruising. Obviously an exciting time for us as employees because maybe we can get more ships out of the US. We'll wait to see what the scheduling comes out with over the next couple of weeks. But I would expect to see a lot of announcements from different cruise companies coming out very soon. Very exciting times and I wanted to bring you this to you as soon as possible with hopefully a bit more background that maybe you didn't know before uh, or some explanation. Uh, if you have any more details that I haven't covered, please do put it down in the comments. I hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I'll bring in lots more cruise content updates as I can. And obviously a bit of update about what I'm doing on board. I'm here on board Pacific Explorer down in uh, Singapore at the moment. Uh, and I'm gonna be out here for a couple more months yet by the looks of it. So as my time goes here, I'll be able to bring you more content from on board the ship and what we do as crew members and as officers over here in the cruise industry. So uh, yeah, please do subscribe, follow along. And I guess that's it for me. Please do stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very soon 
on the next video. Take care. Thanks for sticking with me right through to the end there, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one and getting a full update on what's going on. For those of you in the US, hopefully this is very exciting for you and maybe I'll be seeing you on a cruise sooner than we thought. For me now, I'm going to be staying down here in Singapore to enjoy the sunset and I'll keep you updated as to my relocation as and when it happens. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and stay safe.